video. It's the name you're reviewing, Stranger Things Season 4, Part 2. This part came out on Friday and stars Millie Bobby Brown and Finn Wolfhart. Now before we start, the like button, subscribe to the post notification bell so you never forget a video. Let's just start. So let's just start with talking about Episode 8. So Episode 8 is titled Papa. Um, so the opening sequence, I thought it was great. It was a great opening sequence. Um, Eleven... She's having flashbacks in Dr. Brenner's psychiatrist facility, and she closes the Upside Down. That was from season two, where she does eventually close the Upside Down. Um, and I thought it was a great opening sequence. It captured my attention immediately. Um, there's also a great continuation from the last episode. Nancy is still stuck in the Upside Down. Um, I liked how they did not have any continuity problems with this episode. Um, and it continued from the last exact last point of the last episode. Um, Vecna is once again still terrifying. Um, Robert Unglin, I I don't I think it's either Robert Unglin or Jamie Campbell Bauer. One of them is playing Vecna, and it's terrifying. Vecna is still terrifying, and it is the thing of nightmares. Um, there's also some great interaction between Vecna and Nancy since Nancy is stuck in the Upside Down. Vecna does get to interact with Nancy, and their conversations are very. Um, I wouldn't say meaningful, but very creepy and eerie. Um, there's also a great continued relationship between Hopper and Joyce. Hopper and Joyce continue their relationship in this episode. Um, in this episode, and I thought it was great. Of course, they do talk about um, what how Joyce was feeling when Hopper was supposedly dead, um, and him and Russia and all that. And I thought it was very, very well done. Um, there's also a great continued relationship between Hopper, Joyce, Enzo, and Murray. I thought that the four of those characters. Are fantastic. I really enjoyed all of their dialogue between each other. Enzo is awesome. I really enjoyed Enzo's character and by now in episode 8 when you're nearing the end of season 4 I thought that Enzo's character did progress well enough. Um, there's also a great continued relationship between Argyle and Jonathan and Mike and Will. Mike and Will continue their uh, strong friendship even though their friendship was sort of broken in season 3 and uh, the beginning of season 4. But they continue their relationship, and I thought that their friendship is very, very meaningful to this episode. Um, and I thought Argyle and Jonathan, fantastic. Argyle is a great character. Um, just their conversations in Surfer Pizza, fantastic. Um, there's also some fantastic dialogue between Eleven and Dr. Brenner. Now, Dr. Brenner and Eleven have very, very meaningful conversations in this episode. And I think it works because it does go into a little bit more of the backstory without going too much into it since we already saw a lot of Eleven's backstory. Um, and Dr. Brenner, he's a great character. I really enjoyed Dr. Brenner's character in this, um, in this season. Um, he has a lot more to do in this season. This is probably his biggest season yet. Season 2 and Season 1, they did show Dr. Brenner, but he wasn't as big of a character as he is in Season 4, and I thought he did a great job. Um, there's also a great scene where Nancy explains to Max, Steve, Dustin, Eddie, Robin, Nancy, Lucas, and Erica about what she saw in the Upside Down, and it is creepy, but I think that it works on sort of a uh, character level because it does show that all of them want to defeat Vecna, and they will do anything um, and anything to do what they need to do to defeat Vecna. Um, there's also a great scene where Nancy, Max, Steve, Dustin, Eddie, Robin, Lucas, and Erica are now discussing how to kill Vecna. Um, like I said, all those characters, they live in Hawkins, they want to protect their town, um, so of course they want to uh, kill Vecna and stop this creature from destroying all their lives, and I thought it worked very, very well. Um, there's also another great scene where Eddie, I really enjoy the scene. Um, it's just, it's not even that important of a scene, it's just a very, um, it's just a cool Easter egg. For the scene since of course Stranger Things does take place in the 80s. Eddie, my favorite character in the entire season, um, is wearing a Michael Myers mask to disguise himself with Nancy, Max, Steve, Justin, Robin, Lucas, and Eric and Erica. They take an RV. I just really enjoyed that sequence just because of the Easter eggs that it put um, into the show. Um, there's also a great small return of Jason Carver who is the basketball player from season 4 part 1. Um, his girlfriend was Chrissy who was of course killed by Vecna who of course um, Jason still thinks that Eddie did it, and I think it works on another level because Jason Carver, 
it, I thought he was going to be that one character that was just um, just constant throughout the entire season. Just saying, oh, I know you killed my girlfriend when everyone knows that uh, Eddie did not do it. Well, the audience is the only one that knows that Eddie didn't do it. Everyone else still knows that Eddie, or still thinks that Eddie killed uh, Jason Carver's girlfriend. And the reason he is going after um, is going after one of the other characters. Uh, he's going after Lucas. The reason he's going after Lucas is, of course, because uh, he knows that he is part of Hellfire and with uh, Eddie and all that. And I thought it works still in this uh, in this season or this part. Um, there's also a great scene where Dustin, Eddie, Nancy, Robin, Erica, and Lucas are creating weapons to kill Vecna. They create weapons, and it's a great sequence. I really enjoyed the sequence. Um, it's a fun sequence. You see them creating all these weapons, and you see them obviously wanting to kill Vecna, and they are willing to sacrifice themselves to kill Vecna. Um, there's also a great scene where the military break into a psychiatrist's hospital, and they just murder all the psychiatrist hospital guards just to find Eleven. So... I wouldn't say the military are obviously not the overarching villains of this season, but they are sort of secondary antagonists because they are trying to find Eleven. Um, and just because she has powers, they're trying to, of course, take her away and all that stuff. And I do kill all the people in the psychiatrist hospital just to get to Eleven. And I thought it was a great scene. Um, there's also another great scene where Eleven is rescued by Mike, Will, Jonathan, and Argyle. This is the part in the, uh, in the sand or sort of this desert looking area and Eleven's just standing there. Mike, Will, Jonathan, Argyle um, are showing up in the surfer pizza um, truck and they pick up Eleven and I thought it was a great scene. Um, and there's also a great scene where Dr. Brenner tries to save Eleven from the military killing her, but Dr. Brenner of course gets shot and he dies. Um, this part Eleven doesn't do anything to help Dr. Brenner and I understand why she doesn't do that. Um, because it does, of course, obviously Dr. Brenner is not a good character at all. He's a terrible character. Um, not in a bad way, but of course in the villain type. He should not have been saved. Um, I think it was perfect for him to die like this by the military. Um, and I thought it worked well. There's also a great ending sequence. I thought the ending sequence was great. It's Max, Erica, Lucas, and they walk into Vecna or Henry Creel's house. And it just cuts to black. And it just makes you think and wonder about what's going to happen in the next episode. So I thought the ending sequence was great. That's all for episode 8. Now let's move on to episode 9. Now episode 9 is called The Piggyback. Um, the opening sequence, I thought it was hilarious. It was a hilarious opening sequence. Yuri tries to start up the helicopter with Enzo and Murray. Um, Joyce and Hopper do continue their relationship. And you of course have Nancy, Steve, Eddie, Robin, and Dustin preparing to stop and kill Vecna. Great opening sequence. Um, there are a lot of things happening in the opening sequence, but it all works very, very well. Um, there are also some great interactions in the relationship between Joyce and Hopper. Like I said in the previous episode, Joyce and Hopper have great sequences and great scenes in this episode. Since this is the finale of season four, they do have some great scenes together. Um, there's also a great continued relationship between Eddie and Dustin. Eddie and Dustin's relationship between this entire season is very meaningful and it always it all led to this episode and I'll get to some of the things about uh, Eddie later but Eddie and Dustin their relationship is fantastic and very emotional at times um, there's also a great relationship um, a great conversation between Steve and Nancy they do have an emotional conversation about their relationship and I thought it worked very very well um, there's also a great relationship between Max and Lucas they write down their conversation on cards because of course they can't speak because of the whole um, upside down thing where they're in the room and they can't really talk about anything. They're in the upside down now and they don't know who's watching. Vecna could be watching all of that stuff. So I thought that their relationship and that conversation was very well done. Um, there's also a great continued brotherly relationship between Will and Jonathan. Will and Jonathan have always been on and off as brothers. And I thought that this really secured their relationship as family and as brothers because you see that Jonathan actually cares really um, deeply about Will, and Will also does the same about Jonathan. And I thought their relationship was fantastic. Um, there's also a great scene where Eleven tries to save Max with her underwater dreaming. Um, there's some great connections to season one, season three, all the way to season three. Um, of course, Eleven needs to be underwater in order to do this. And I thought it works very, very well. It was very, very unique. Um, obviously, two stranger things. And I'm glad that they brought it back in season four. Um, there's also a great scene where Eddie plays a guitar on a roof with Dustin to distract bats. 
Eddie is the MVP of this season. I I didn't know what to think about Eddie, but the first frame we get of Eddie, I loved it. It's him, Hellfire Club, with his hands on his head. Um, it's it's awesome. Eddie is one of the best characters in Stranger Things. Um, he is one of my favorite characters, if not um, my favorite character. And I thought this entire episode is very, very centered on Eddie. Um, there's also a great scene where Beckman does stop Max in the Upside Down Hawking School. So it's the part where in season one, I believe, season one or season two, is the dance, um, the winter ball or something like that. And you see it, it's all run down, all destroyed. Max is standing there, and Vecna just slowly walks up to her, and it's awesome. A great scene. Um, there's also a great scene where Lucas fights Jason. Jason thinks Lucas hurt Max when she was in that trance, when she was floating in the air um, in the one sequence with Lucas and um, Jason. And they do fight, and I thought it was a great scene. Um, there's also an awesome scene where Eleven does save Max in, um, from Vecna in the Upside Down Hawkins School. So, while in the Upside Down with that whole uh, dance, um, Eleven does save Max from Vecna. She, of course, uses her powers, and it's one of the most um, awesome sequences in this show. Um, there's also an awesome scene where Eddie stops running and fights off the Upside Down Bats. Like I said, Eddie is the MVP of the season, and he, he is one of the best characters, if not the best character in the entire Stranger Things show for me. Um, I really loved what they did with Eddie, um, and I'll get to a little bit more later, but Eddie has always been that shy kind of guy, and he wouldn't want to um, sort of not sacrifice himself, but he was always scared to, of course, and uh, he says that he's going to stop running. He goes to fight off all those upside-down bats, and it's awesome. Um, there's also a great sequence where one does become Vecna, and Vecna creating the Shadow Monster from Season 1 to Season 3. It does show that Vecna did create the Shadow Monster. And um, it shows that Vecna was behind all this. Which I can see why. They gave a good enough explanation for how Vecna could be tied to all of this. Um, now, going back to the Eddie playing the guitar. It was awesome. It was easily one of the best sequences in the entire season. Um... It's just awesome. It's just awesome. You see Eddie, 80s typical look with his hair. He has his guitar on the roof in the upside down. All the bats are flying around him. You see him just going off on his guitar. Awesome sequence. Very, very cool. Um, there's also a great sequence where Eleven does fight off Vecna. And Eleven just is awesome in this episode. Uh, she fights off Vecna. And it's a great duel because, of course, Vecna is very powerful. But Eleven is just as powerful as Vecna. So I thought the sequence was great. Uh, there's also a great sequence where Hopper does kill the Demogorgon. Now, Hopper Hopper is awesome. Hopper is a great character. Of course, season three, he supposedly died, which was one of the most emotional sequences in the entire franchise, or the entire um, season, uh, one through three. But, of course, he returns in season four, and he fights off the Demogorgon, and it's awesome. Um, there's also an awesome sequence where Nancy, Robin, and Steve do light Vecna on fire, and that supposedly um, is about to kill Vecna, but it doesn't. And... Then, right after that, there's one of the most emotional sequences in any of the season. My favorite character, um, or I would say top two, my uh, top two favorite character of all time in Stranger Things, Eddie. He sacrifices himself and fights off the upside down bats, but is killed. Dustin tries to save Eddie, but he is um, unsuccessful. And Eddie dies, and it is very, very emotional. Um, there were near tears coming to my eyes when Eddie died because you could see that he was not running away anymore he even right after he got stabbed multiple times by the bats he's on the ground and he tells Dustin I didn't run away at this time it is easily one of the most emotional sequences of any season in Stranger Things so I thought it was fantastic um there's also a somewhat emotional sequence where Max is killed once she's in the Vecna trans state um I don't think she's actually dead um it wouldn't make a lot of sense. And then, of course, it is revealed later on that she does survive. But I thought that it was good enough. Um, there's also a great sequence where Eleven tries to save Max by using flashbacks of her with Max. 
Um, of course, flashback to season three and all that. I thought it was a great sequence. Um, and one of the saddest things that continues throughout this entire season is that everyone in Hawkins still thinks that Eddie Munson is a murderer. And even though he sacrificed himself to save the town that hates him, they still, um, even though they really don't know what happened, but they still do hate Eddie. And I thought it was very, very emotional. Um, there's also a great sequence where Max is in the hospital with Lucas. She survived, but she's in a coma, and Lucas is just sitting there comforting her. I thought it was a great sequence. Um, there's also an emotional sequence where Mr. Munson actually finds out about Eddie's death from Dustin. Um, very emotional once again because, of course, Eddie just died. Um, now, what we just saw Eddie die like 30, 30 minutes ago, 20 minutes ago, and it's very, very emotional. Um, he's in... Of course, there's a, they're in Hawkins, uh, the school, and everyone there, it's sort of like a, um, a refuge facility where they're taking care of all these people um, who've been hurt uh, with the upside down and all the stuff, and you see them all getting helped. You see Eddie Munson's father there. Dustin has a conversation with him. Very emotional. Um, there's also a great sequence where Will reveals to Mike that Vecna is still alive, so Vecna is um, still alive. Um, and of course, Will still has that feeling that he gets in the back of his head when any upside down monster, like a shadow monster, um, is revealing themselves. And I thought it was a great scene. Um, there's also a great reunion between Eleven and Hopper. Eleven and Hopper have a reunion all the way from season three, where Hopper is, of course, uh, of course, died, but is still alive. And he's still alive. Eleven has not seen him for the entire season four. When they finally see each other. It is one of the most emotional and fantastic sequences of the season. Um, and the ending sequence I thought was great. It's snowing in Hawkins, and Hawkins, and there are chaos tornadoes everywhere, which season five, I think, is going to be an awesome finale. So season four, part two, is fantastic, and I really enjoyed it, and I think you guys should all check out Stranger Things season four, part two, and I really really recommend it especially if you're a Stranger Things fan and with all that said I think that I'm going to give this one four and a half out of five stars if I could give it a rating for a show because it is a very 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 good conclusion to Stranger Things thank you for watching don't forget to hit the like button subscribe to the post notification bell so you know for a video I'm Peter thank you for watching